In this video, we're going to look at correlation and how we can find a value for correlation. So correlation is when we have two variables, let's call them x and y, and we might have the variables laid out in a table something like this, and we could have several values for x and several matching values for y. We're going to have a look at an example with numbers in a minute. But first of all, we're going to talk about the different things that could happen. So first of all, it could be that as x increases, y decreases perfectly. And when we plot these points, we get a perfect line going down like that. That is called negative correlation, and it's a perfect line, so it is perfect negative. All the correlation we're going to look at is linear, so it forms a line. Similarly though, it could be that as x increases, y increases, and we get a perfect line of data going upwards, like that. And that is positive. That is perfect positive linear correlation. Sometimes we get negative correlation but it's not quite perfectly in the line, but it's very close to the line. So maybe the data goes down like this. This is more likely for actual data. And that is called a strong negative. That's a strong negative. And again, we can have the same going upwards. It could be that it goes up. That would be a strong positive. We can have what's called a weak negative, and that is when the data still goes down, and it still is about a line, but it's not so closely fitted to that line. So this one would be a weak. And finally, we could have a similar idea going up. They all go up. It goes up in this vague line. But so closely linked. And that would be a weak. We could also have the possibility that there's no relationship between the data. There's no line that goes up or It's just the data is all over. And that would be no correlation at all. That's when there's no relationship between going at x and y. Now, it's good to have these words, but we'd rather be able to sort of numerically talk about the correlation. And that's where the product moment correlation coefficient comes in. And this is denoted by the letter R. We'll have a look at how to find this in a moment. But let's first of all see what the different coefficients, correlation coefficients are for these examples. So if it's perfectly negative, we say R is equal to minus. And if it's perfectly positive, we say R is equal to plus 1. If there's no correlation at all, then R is equal to 0. So R always takes a value between minus 1 and 1. Minus 1 is a perfect straight line, but negative. Plus 1 is a perfect straight line, but positive correlation. And if it's 0, there's no correlation at all. This strong negative 1 is equal to minus 0 point. For the weak negative, R is equal to maybe minus 0.4. For the strong positive, R is equal to 0. Point, that's a little bit less than the negative, so let's say 85. And for the weak positive, that's maybe R is equal to 3. So we give a value depending on how correlated the data is. And we can work out this value, and we're going to look at how we can do that using our graphics display calculator to work out the value of R. So let's have a look at a specific example now.
In this question, we're told that we have the maths results, physics results, and art results for seven different students. And we're going to look at the coefficient for these. So we're going to pull up our graphics display calculator. And as you can see, I've already typed in the three values, the three lists of data. There's one for maths, there's two for physics, and there's three for art. And we're going to uh, draw a graph, we're going to draw a scatter graph. So we click on F1 for graph. We're then going to make sure we're set properly. So we go to set to make sure we're set to a scatter graph. And here we can see we have a scatter graph for list 1 and list 2, which is what we want. And we hit enter to go back to the previous page. Now we go to graph 1 which is the graph we want to plot, and it plots the scatter graph. From here we can see that it is a positive linear correlation. The line goes up. But we want to know the value of R. How positively correlated is this value? And to do that, we click on the, the calc option, and we're looking at linear so we make sure we click on F2 for X, that is linear. We want a regression line, would be this one, that's fine, but we're not interested in that. We're just interested in this R value here. And R in this case, we can see R is our value. So R for maths versus physics is 0 0.887. So for maths versus physics, was 0 0.7. Now, if we go have a look at the other comparisons, and we need to change the scatter graph we're doing. So if we exit from this information here, and this time we're going to set our graph to do maths and art, so that's list 1, and list 3. So we're going to change this to list 3. Now when we plot the graph, we get the maths and art results. And we can see from these results, it doesn't look like much of a line. So we press calc. And then linear, so we hit X and choose the first one of these options. And we get the value for R here. And we can see R this time is minus 0 0.161. Minus 0 0.161. So for maths, equal to minus 0 0.1. So that means there's a very weak negative correlation. But it's pretty close to zero, so it's a very weak negative correlation. Finally, if we want to look at the final physics and art, then we can once again go back, and this time set it physics is list two. So we're going to set it to list two and list three. And then, once we've got that set, we can do the graph. And the calculation, it's literally going to choose X. And then the first one of the two options we get given. And it tells us here that R, in this case, is... 0, 1, 0, 0. So finally, for physics 
and art are at the 0 0.0100, three significant figures, which means very, very little correlation. That is pretty much zero. So we would say there is no correlation between the physics scores and the art scores.